Hey there. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is From the Logo. I'm Kirby. That's Riley and Colton. Today, we're going to talk about the perfect fit for Blazers guard Malcolm Brogdon, the veteran guard out of Virginia, averaging about 15 and 5 this year so far. He's been a rock for the young Blazers team, but I think we all know he's not going to be in their long term plans. Colton, where do you think he is headed off to? Where do you think the Blazers are going to ship him off to as the trade deadline approaches? Well, there's a couple of things to look out for. You know, you got to look at it up from both teams' perspective. I'm sure what the Blazers are looking for, you know, a first-round pick. That would be probably their go-to thing. We got matching salary as well. Kind of that that kind of a deal for Brogdon. He's played well. He's played a lot of minutes. He's been starting, and he, you know, great veteran out on the floor. There's a team that sticks out. You know, we could talk about the Lakers and, you know, how they end up getting every valuable role player veteran at some point for pretty cheap. But I want to turn my attention to the East, the Knicks, the New York Knicks. They recently made a trade where they sent out Emmanuel Quickly and R.J. Barrett and acquired OG and Anubi, right? So that kind of solidified their wing defender, you know, need. But now when they when they traded Emmanuel quickly, what do they got? They got a hole at that backup guard position. Uh, I think that Coach Thibodeau would love a guy like Malcolm Brogdon. I think he would fit exactly what the Knicks need, exactly what the Knicks are looking for. The Blazers recently made a trade last season for with Josh Hart going that way for a similar trade. So that, you know, that line of communication is open. And the Knicks have multiple first round picks extra to trade. So I think it's a pretty easy team to pick a spot for, for Malcolm Brogdon. And I think that you'd fit in well there. I mean, I think you, you already said it. You said that there's one team in the NBA who always gets at some point, every good role player during their career and gets to make a run with them and, you know, pull the best out of them. And they always get it for nothing. Absolutely nothing. But I'm afraid that that's exactly what's going to happen with Malcolm Brogdon. I think he's going to L.A. L.A. is right now in the market for high efficiency players, uh, guards who can score and defend, basically, is what they need. They they need someone who can who can put the ball in the hoop at times, you know, and maybe when the starters or the stars aren't out there, they can, you know, fill up the stats a little bit and keep leads or whatever. Um, I and mean, he's not or, D'Angelo Russell. Not D'Angelo Russell, exactly. And they need the they would need Brogdon start for the Lakers. Hold it down. I think there's a chance he would. I, I, they'd probably at least try it. I mean, he's a, he's a good player, and they don't need a star at point guard. In fact, I think they've proven that having a star at point guard, in addition to everybody else, is kind of a distraction. You know, Le- LeBron doesn't necessarily need a star point guard. Um, sometimes he is the star point guard, but they have to have someone who can defend the little guy and keep up with the fast guy on the other team. And, you know, Brogdon is very efficient. He's not going to hurt the team. He's not going to go out there and, and, you know, put them in a worse position than they would be without him. He's only going to add to them. And yeah, he's not going to add as much as a, a star point guard would, but I don't think they want that. So that's why I think he's going. I hope that we can get you know, if a first round pick out of it or, or something decent, but knowing the yeah. Lakers and knowing LeBron, we're probably going to get like one second round pick in $500. Ooh. I honestly think there's a chance that he could start on either one of those teams. He's, he really has the ability because of his size to play both guard positions and his defense. And he can also space the floor as an off ball shooter. Um, right now, the Lakers starting backcourt, at least according to ESPN depth chart, D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves. I know they've kind of been shuffling that lineup around a little bit. I think Reddish might be hurt right now, could be part of the reason. But I think Brogdon is better, or at least in that, I I think he's better than Reeves. I mean, I don't know, Reeves is... You're going to get Laker fans coming in here. He's up and down, but I mean, Brogdon is... You know, I guess he is a sixth man of the year, though, so he can come off the bench, too. He would just be a good fit, regardless of whether he started or not, with either team. Uh, The Knicks, their starting backcourt, Brunson and uh, DiVincenzo. Again, I think Brogdon is definitely better than DiVincenzo, just my personal opinion. Um, But, yeah, I think you got to get a first-round pick 
from Brogdon. Otherwise, the trade, uh, the Drew Holiday trade, was a uh, starts to become more and more of a misfire. I know that Blazers got that Golden State pick out of the deal, but uh, not being able to to get a first for him that would hurt. Um, yeah, I, I think he fits pretty well on it. He really fits well on any NBA team. He just he's a plug and play kind of player. Plays defense, shoots the ball. Uh, heady it makes the right decisions plenty of playoff experience he's just a consummate professional I was very excited when the Blazers got him because I thought he would be able to help mentor the young guys and bring them along and I think he's done that to an extent he's kind of kept the team afloat but it's starting to get to that time of year where they gotta they probably gotta move on for him do right by him by moving him on to a you know contender I don't really know if either one of those teams is a true championship contender um but they're at least in a better place than the blazers right now yeah, one thing be... for sure, he's, Go he's gonna get traded and i think it's this deadline so we'll see who but do you yeah. think do you think there's a chance that the blazers package up anybody uh with him any of the any other kind of random young guy or just uh, another piece or do you think it's the chance the likelihood is it's just going to be him going out I don't think young guys will go out in a move like this unless you're acquiring another young guy in return. Uh, and salary obligations as well might be a reason you might see somebody get shipped out. But I think Brogdon's going to be the core of any deal, and I don't think the Blazers are in the market of giving up young guys. They're in the market of acquiring them. But in this case, it's likely going to result in the positive benefit for the Blazers being a first-round pick. And it's, yeah, probably, was... no, it's not going to be a, a lottery pick, and that, that's not what – Brogdon is worth but you know a first round pick for that for a Brogdon move where you just kind of holding and flipping him is is a pretty good deal for both sides I think yeah I wonder if uh one of those teams would be more enticed into making that trade giving up that number one overall pick if they threw in like uh I'm not saying any of our top bigs but like a duop re or any of our top young guys but like a duop wreath or a Baji or someone like that throwing them in there I don't, don't think you do Six man of the year, uh, you know, Brogdon speaks for himself and he's played well again this year. He's a great fit on both these teams. And that's why I said the Knicks specifically, because I know they have some extra firsts that they might not need all of. And I just think it's a, a fit. You know, it's it's, Are kind they... of Hart. it's Josh Hart part two. You're going to get a Cam Reddish type back to fill in salary along with a first. Right. That's exactly what happened before with. Josh Hart. And I even called the Knicks being Josh Hart's destination before. And so hopefully I'm right again. And it's a simple transaction. Yeah. To be, to be clear, I was being a little bit facetious when I said that we're going to give him up for a second and $500 from LA, you know, that just tends to be how things work out with LA. I do think, I don't think the Blazers are going to give him up for anything less than a first round pick. Um, LA's first round pick. I mean, if, if they're, keep playing like they have been, it might be pretty close to a lottery pick. So then we have to worry about protections and that sort of thing. But I also think it's possible that it might be, we might only send Brogdon, but it might be part of a slightly larger deal. Like LA might be looking to move on from D'Angelo potentially, especially if they're bringing in Brogdon, they don't really need him anymore. And he's kind of been a detriment to the team potentially. I will see how the comments feel about that, but I think he probably has been a detriment more often than he's been an asset and so they might be sending him somewhere. They might be sending him to a team that has more firsts to part with. Um, and that might be where the Blazers pay payload ends up coming from for Malcolm. You, you heard it here first, guys. We're going to be trading Brogdon to the Lakers for Cam Reddish and Skylar Mays. They're coming home. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.